today let's turn to the book of the or the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 16. Chapter 16. I'm going to start from verse 16. Chapter 16, verse 16. Acts 16, 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer. As we went to prayer. That a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not, which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up to gather together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them sec securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. The text opens up and says that these men were walking to prayer. These men were walking to the place of prayer. And day after day, this certain woman came to them daily on their place to prayer. So before they even meet the place of prayer, before they even get into the place of prayer, this woman is meeting them, following them to the place of prayer. So the enemy shows up before we can even get to the place of prayer. Because there was one objective for this woman. To stop them from getting to the place of prayer. So day after day, this woman was not able to stop them from getting to the place of prayer. But it says eventually. Eventually, Paul got upset. Let's keep in mind that this woman possesses a spirit of divination, which gives her the ability to tell fortune or to foresee the future. So Paul, being annoyed, said that I can no longer take enough of this. And he cast the demon out of the woman. But the response from her masters were that they were upset because of the money. Upset because of money. We see something similar happen in the life of Jesus as the people came to him and tried to trap him in his tongue with a question of money asking, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? 
So the same thing happens with Jesus. There's a problem with money. But in churches today, the woman who is able to tell fortunes or foresee the future would be given a specific gift. She would be called a prophet. Because the prophetic gifting has been distorted in the church to be one that is able to just tell the future. There is no mind of God attached to it. It is just those that are being able to tell the future or tell you what's to come. And the reason why it's a popular gift in the church because the people, the body, they cannot see what tomorrow holds. So because a prophet or a fortune teller or whatever you want to call them is able to tell them what tomorrow holds, they hold fast to this gift. But I come to understand that prophet and prophet don't mix. The moment P-R-O-P-H-E-T and P-R-O-F-E-T join, the moment is the moment that God is not operating. Because the scripture says that the masters were upset because of the money. So whenever prophets talk about money, you have to assess the spirit. The scripture t clearly tells us that we cannot, we cannot serve two masters. That we will hate one and love the other. That we will hold to one and despise the other. We cannot serve God in wealth. That's scripture. So when we have prophets talking about money, there is no way that a prophet of God can talk about money and serve God at the same time. And we being true servants of God, as Paul was, we would be upset in speaking out against those that are trying to rape you and take your money as opposed to telling you the mind of God. There is no way that you can sit day after day, you come to a point where you speak out against those that are trying to take the money from the people of God. It says that if we serve God, we will despise which means we cannot stand for it which means we cannot tolerate it we will despise those who serve wealth I know Apostle London is truly a servant of God because there is a clear indication of who he serves and who he despises we get all confused about things in church that we place labels on people and we sit there and say because this person speaks out against something that they are not a servant of God but it is a servant of God if they are speaking out against the other master because you hold to one and despise the other. Amen. So these men were on their way to the place of prayer. Day after day. When Paul spoke. When Paul spoke. And he commanded the spirit to come out. They were upset and they arrested, not Paul, but it says Paul and Silas. Paul spoke, but Paul and Silas was arrested. And we still want to be connected to Apostle Nigel London. 
Silas never spoke, but he's guilty by association. But the strange thing about the text is that the writer of the text says that we were on our way. So it clearly indicates that there was Paul, Silas, and the writer of the text being Luke. So Paul, Silas, the writer, and there were others. But Paul and Silas were arrested. Paul and Silas. It does not say that Luke was arrested. Just Paul and Silas. I'll get into to why this was. But I want you to remain focused on the fact that they were on their way to prayer. They were on their way to prayer. Day after day, they made it to prayer. But this one day, they didn't. This one day, they did not make it to the place of prayer. They were arrested before they made it there. They were arrested. But then later on in the text, we clearly see that Paul and Silas was arrested. And it says, when midnight had come, they were praying and singing hymns. The strange thing about this text is that as often as I heard it preached in church, I often misquoted it and misheard it. That I often thought that Paul and Silas began praying and singing at midnight. But it says that at midnight they were already so when midnight came upon them that they were already praying and that they were already singing unto God. So even though they had intentions on making it to the place of prayer one day and they did not make it there, it did not stop them from praying. We have allowed our situations, some situations that have held us back from getting us to a place of prayer. Paul and Silas being arrested did not stop them from praying on a specific day, but they allowed their prayer on one day to transition them into prayer on the next day. They were not hindered by being in jail. They were not hindered by being being arrested they were not hindered by being shackles because even if your hands are bound even if your feet is bound you still have a mouth to pray unto God and to sing his praises you still have a mouth but we've allowed our situations in life to cripple us from praying They had intentions on the same day to pray that they were arrested on. But it did not stop their prayer. Did not stop it. But watch this. The easiest time to pray is when you're trapped. The easiest time to pray is when you're trapped. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But the, the hardest time to praise is when you're trapped. So the easiest time to pray is when you're trapped because you have to ask God for something. But the hardest thing to do when you're trapped is still praise or sing unto him. So it goes to show that some of us have been praying wrong when we're trapped. Because when we're trapped, it's easy to pray. 
but it says that the prison shook and there was an earthquake when they prayed and when they praise together because when we join prayer with praise there has to be a shaking in the earth but when you sit there and you just ask God for things when you're trapped he does not have to hear you but when you tell God how good he is even when you're bound he shall indeed hear you but some of us have been hindered in our praise because we feel as if the situation is too hard for us to tell God how good he is even when we're bound it's hard to praise God when we're bound it's hard to praise God when you're bound But we found ourselves in situations where we're bound and God does not show up because all we know how to do is pray. All we know how to do is ask God for things. But we neglect to tell God that you're still good in spite of. That even while I'm bound, even while I'm persecuted, even while they conspire against me, even while they try to trap me in my tongue, even while they try to arrest me for the good I'm doing in serving you, that I still have a song. I still have a God you're worthy. I still have a God you oh my God you're great. I still have a, the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Still have it. Still have it. So we have become very confused of when to pray and when to praise. Because the psalmist wrote. That he will praise God at all times. The psalmist wrote that he will praise God at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. But we have allowed situations to tell us when to praise. We have allowed our circumstances to tell us when to praise. That when things are good, we praise God. That when you have money in your pocket, you praise God. That when our spouse is giving us what they're supposed to give us, we praise God. That when the pastor speaks good about me, we praise God. That when everything is going well, we praise God. But the psalmist said, in spite of, I still praise him. So we have Paul and Silas. Scripture says that when there is a minimum requirement of two, the scripture says that all we have to have is a minimum requirement of two that are gathered in his name asking for whatever they want. So God shows us in the simplicity while even more were connected to what Paul did while we at least had Paul Silas Luke and others God shows us that all it takes is two that can stand up and say that while a 
prison while a prison while there are many that are bound all it takes two to be gathered in his name in that the whole place will be shaken in that the prisoners that did not even ask for anything they will receive the blessings of the prayers and the praises of two The power of God was displayed by two. Two. Just two of them. Just two of them. How many of us in church are truly praising God and praying to God that the whole entire congregation that I I do not believe that every single person that shows up in the church service that they are free. That there is week after week that some of us show up bound. That some of us shows up tied up. That some of us shows up burdened. That some of us shows up hindered. And I believe that if only two righteous, that two true sons of God want to stand up in this place and pray unto God and praise God, that there will be a shaking in core ministries international and that those that are captive and those that are tied up and those that are bound will be set free in this place the entire prison it says that none was left entire prison with the minimum requirement of two core ministries international we ought to get ourselves in a true place of prayer and praise and singing spiritual hymns unto the Lord so that those that are bound shall be set free and none shall be left in the prison when we leave this place call ministries international this is our time for none being left behind for none being left bound for none being left shackled in the name of jesus i declare it unto the lord Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The scripture says that after they were all, after they were all set free, that after the shackles came off of all of them, and the doors rolled open that the guard was going to fall on his sword but then Paul said that no 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 you don't have to do this because we all are here watch this Paul said that everyone that was set free is still here because the guard understood that there was consequences for what happened on his watch but Paul said there's no need to do that we are all still here somebody need to catch this we're all still here even in the place we were bound at we're all still here because the scripture says that Paul and Silas were servants of God it says that Paul and Silas prayed and sang and everyone was set free so in the place where God showed up and everyone was set free it transitioned to a place of prayer and praise to a place of worship where everyone was able to partake in Paul and Silas 
prayed and they sang but everyone stayed where God was everyone stayed where the power of God was manifested so even some violent criminals that were in that place that could not wait to be set free and run out of the place when God shows up they are subject to the spirit of God that is in that place so just because you might show up a criminal just because you might show up a sinner that when God shows up for you that you will be subject to the spirit of God people come to church they're bound and then they want to run out at the end of service no they come in they leave free and they stay in his presence but more than that so we understand that we understand that with the prayers and the praises of two that everyone could be set free but watch this the Lord is so good he's so good that the one who is on the watch he sat there and said I understand and I see the power of God because they were set free he asked how can I be saved that I am not bound like you are but I'm bound I might not be shackled and in a prison like you are but I'm bound there ought to be a testimony coming out of your life how God has saved you from being a prisoner from someone looking at your life and say that how can I be saved because I've seen the power of God manifested in your life so Paul continues to say that not only you but your household so God shows up on a behalf of two saves everyone and then saves a man and his household just because of two men not allowing the enemy to silence their prayer it all started with prayer I come to understand why this service starts with intercession because while we are making it into this place to start this service with intercession there are certain spirits that are following us that even when we show up in this place there are certain spirits that are following us certain spirits that follow us right into this very place so it says that Paul and Silas were praying and singing before we even deal with the word of God the first two things we do in this service is pray in praise so some of us should be set free even before the word comes to us we wait for the word to set us free but as long as two of us two of us before the word can even be uttered out of the preacher's mouth there should be those that are set free in this service there should be those that are saved in this service Service. there should be manifestation of the power of God before the word is even spoken in this place if we can get ourselves into a true posture and place of prayer 
in praise. Not only that, I find it very strange how lies are manifested in the church. Why do I say this? Why do I say this? Ashton, pull up 17. It says, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Proclaim to us the way of salvation. The scripture says that this woman is possessed with the spirit of divination. One who gives her the ability to tell fortunes, to tell the future. That's not the spirit of God. So even a woman who is not filled with the spirit of God is even speaking truth about the men of God. So even those, now I understand why Apostle London had me. They cannot deny who he is. So some people will look upon us and they will not deny who we are. But because of our master and their master, they hate us. So because we place our hands in their pocket, they hate us. So how can lies show up in the church of God? It shouldn't even be possible. Should not even be possible. So for those that hate Apostle Nigel London, and those that hate Core Ministries International, and the sons and daughters that are connected to him, I'm here to tell Day that even those that hate us cannot lie about who you are. That even though they hate us, even though they despise us, even though they do not like us, even though we serve two different masters, they cannot lie about who we are. They can't lie about who we are. They cannot lie about who we are. They cannot. They cannot. The scripture tells us that he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Scripture also tells us that he will make our enemies our footstool. Pull, pull the scripture back up, verse 17. He will make our enemies our footstool. So the girl said, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. So before... Paul and Silas and the others spoke of who they were she promoted who they were so when the scripture says that our enemies will be our footstool it really means that our enemies will be the ones that lift us up and promote us in the earth that we do not need to sit there and proclaim who we are that we do not need to sit there and take and need to take credit for who we are that our enemies will understand who we are and they will proclaim who we are that our enemies will lift us up our enemies shall be our footstool that when we stand on a stool that we are elevated in our position 
So I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you today that you don't even need to say who you are. That as long as you remain steadfast in the Lord, that as long as you remain in who he is, as long as you adhere to the word of God, as long as you serve God, that your enemies will be the one that will promote you, that your enemies will be the ones that will lift you up, that indeed Core Ministries International we are lifted up not because of what we say but because we have many enemies and the more enemies we got, the more we shall be lifted up because as as, as long as the enemies are speaking about us, they are speaking about God. Allow your enemies to promote who you are. Apostle, as I know that you are either watching this or you will see this, that there is no need to proclaim who you are. That as long as you continue to speak the uncompromised word of God, that even those that hate you, that even those that despise you, that even those that don't like what you do and like what you say because they feel as if you are taking their money away, that those will be the same ones that will lift you up, that they will continue to have your name in their mouth and you shall be promoted you shall be elevated this is your season to be persecuted this is your season for those to try to shackle you but as long as you continue to hold on to God that you shall be elevated that you shall be lifted up and for those that are connected to Apostle London this is our time to be persecuted but the Lord says that blessed are those who are persecuted I'm here to tell you that we are blessed that we are blessed even while we are persecuted we are blessed the Lord says that we are blessed we are blessed on this day stand up magnify the Lord with me because we are blessed today do not fret of the evil doers do not despise your enemies but the Lord shall reward us because we stand for righteousness because we speak against sin because we promote holiness in the name of Jesus our enemies shall lift us up our enemies shall promote us in the name of Jesus glory to God you are worthy to be praised hallelujah you are worthy when I see the post about Apostle Nigel London in the post about Core Ministries International in the body of Christ I get excited I get excited because those that follow the ones that make the post will now begin to follow Apostle Nigel London because of your enemies those that follow your enemies shall be exposed to truth because they now shall follow you. They once followed your enemies, but now they follow you in the name of Jesus. That those that follow your enemies shall now follow you. You 
ought to you ought to praise God for your enemies today you ought to bless God for your enemies today I mean you ought to radically praise God for your enemies today oh my God today I'm just gonna close off with a brief testimony brief testimony brief testimony you can continue to play AJ real quick testimony today I understood why the let me tell you something I've been preaching in this church for a few years now and you've never seen anything like this for me. That I would have never imagined that I would be up here actually preaching and hooting and hollering like I am today. But I'm excited. And the reason why I'm excited today because a few weeks ago Pastor Mel is a true example in this ministry of one who prays and prays, who pray and prays. A true example. A true example. And a few weeks ago, just because of the stance that I took, I won't even go into the details of it. For unrighteousness. The individual that I spoke to then declared the words that came out of my mouth must have come from Pastor Mel. Pastor Mel has no idea what I'm talking about. She has no idea of even the situation I'm speaking of. But because of the stance that I took, watch this, watch this, that because they heard my voice, and they previously heard Pastor Mel's voice, they understood that there was one voice. And because of that one voice being connected to God, I was hated for it. But all that did was solidify who I was. So even those who proclaim to love us, when they turn around and say that they hate you for the stance and righteousness that you take, you ought not to cry, you ought not to fret, but you ought to praise God because they have solidified who you are so your enemies when you declare righteousness, you ought to thank God because they solidify that you are a servant of the Most High God and you proclaim a lot to say about who we are our enemies have a lot to say 
about who we are just tell them to keep talking just tell them to keep on talking just tell them to keep having your name in their mouth just tell them to keep talking about who you are just tell them to keep proclaiming of who you are that they cannot deny who you are that they cannot deny that you are a servant of the most high god they cannot deny that you are a child of the most high god they cannot deny that you have been set free they cannot deny that you have been redeemed they cannot deny that the hand of god is on your life deny it they cannot deny it they cannot deny it let's just keep in mind while they may hate it while you may be persecuted while you may be despised there's laws right now that if we speak out against homosexuality and certain sins that we could be arrested with a hate crime so because of who we are and what we stand for there is persecution that is attached to it. But with this text today, Paul and Silas, while they were persecuted and while they were arrested, and even while they were bound, they did not stay that way. I'm here to tell you that persecution shall come to us. We are one of few churches that are speaking out against sins in the ways of this world. I won't lie to you and say that there are not consequences attached to the mandate that has been given to this body. let's shake the foundation of what binds us with our prayer and our praises unto the Lord let us stand today and exemplify true radical prayer and praise in this season unto God let's 